Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and this is part 3 of my quick React tutorial. Uh, in this section we are going to look at how to work with multiple components. Uh, in the first two parts I've done all the, uh, all the coding uh, within the default or top level application component which is created for you when you initialize your React application. Uh, and, and this is fine for very simple examples, but as your application starts to grow, it becomes sort of unmanageable to, uh, to have everything uh, within one, uh, you know, with, within a single function. So uh, React allows you to, uh, to subdivide the uh, the layout of the page uh, and and, uh, and put different parts in uh, different components, which can be uh, so, so there, there are going to be different functions. Each each component will be a function, uh, and you can put each component in a separate file, or you can you can add more components in in this file or in other files. Uh, in general, and and the uh, the uh, the structure that I'm going to follow is that for each component, I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to name it with the name of the component, uh, exactly like, like it was done on the template with, with this first uh, and main uh, component. So, so um, here I have the same code from, from part two uh, with the counter. Uh, this, is, this is still working. Uh, now let's say that we, uh, we now want to have another set of buttons that uh, that modify the counter by five. So in addition to the plus one, minus one, we want to have uh, down below a plus five and a minus five. So of course I could I could copy paste these two buttons and these two functions and and keep duplicating. Uh, but uh, but what we are going to do, which is better, is to create a component that displays these two buttons and the component will receive as an argument or uh, in, in React jargon as a prop. Th th these are called props. Uh, so we are going to, to pass what's the increment. So, so we are going to create two instances of the component, one uh, that jumps the counter by one, and then a, a second instantiation of the component that jumps the counter by, by fives. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So let's start by by moving this logic, the logic that uh, that has these two buttons, to a child uh, component. So uh, let's create a new file. Uh, let's call it uh, let's call it child.js. And this component is uh, it's going to be exactly the, the same structure as app.js. So uh, we are going to start by importing React from React and then export default child. And this is the component. And here we are going to return the, uh, the HTML for, uh, for the component. So uh, we, can, we can take these and put them here, uh, just like that. And then uh, we, we have to take the two functions and move them into the child component. So the, uh, the problem here is that this set counter does not exist here. The, the state is defined in the top level component and we, we don't have access here. This is a different function. It, it knows nothing of that. So, so here is when, uh, when the concept of props uh, enters, the, uh, enters the play here. So we need to pass this set counter function and actually counter as well because we're using it here. So these two need to be passed from the parent to the child. So the way that works is we are going to insert the component right here where, where the buttons were. And a component is just 
a custom HTML tag. So, so here we can say child, just like that. And this will insert that component here. Uh, but of course, I'm, I'm getting an error here because I did not import the component. So I'm going to say import child from child.js. So now we have the component and now we are we're getting errors for uh, for the set counter, I believe, uh, maybe. OK, let's let's keep going and, and we'll see what these errors are about. Um, so we need to pass counter and set counter because the component, the child component needs them. So um, we can say that like this. So we pass them as, uh, I mean, if, if this was HTML, we would say these are attributes. So so we pass them like that into the child component. So now we go to the child and here we receive counter and set counter. And I'm still having an error here. Oh, of course, function. So now uh, we receive these two arguments, and this is uh, if, if you're not familiar with JavaScript, this is a uh, this may, may look like a strange syntax. So um, one way you could do this is you you receive your props, and then here uh, so this will be props dot counter, and the other one will be props dot set counter. Uh, but in uh, in modern JavaScript, you can use the brackets to uh, automatically expand this uh, this object that comes uh, the, the props object and extract its uh, its members. So so then you get them directly into into their own variables, which is a little bit more convenient. Let's check if this works. So this is working great. So now because now I have it as a component, I can I can put a second one and both work. So what we need uh, next is to add the, uh, the step by which the counter will be affected. So let's say here the step is 1 and on this one the step is 5, just like that. And then in the child, we also receive step. So now the buttons can render the step argument. So now we have plus 1, minus 1, plus 5, minus 5. And then here, plus step and minus step. So now this one works by 1. This one works by fives, and now now we have a, uh, a reusable component that uh, that we can instantiate many times and uh, alter its behavior in little ways by passing props to uh, to the component. Um, so one uh, one thing that I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, one thing that uh, I particularly find uh, not great uh, when you pass arguments like this is many many times you need to pass a long list. So, so this this ends up being uh, a really long list. So I, I always try to uh, to minimize the number of arguments that you pass into child components. Uh, and here we have uh, this. We're, we're passing the the counter state variable and the set counter setter for that state variable. And in reality, these, uh, these buttons don't need the counter for anything other than to know when, when, when you press a button to know from, from, where, from, from where you're starting. 
right? You, you need to know the current value so that you can do the increment or the decrement. Uh, but other than that, you don't need it for anything. So you could say that this is a uh, read-only uh, access that the component needs. And the, uh, the set counter, uh, or, or in general, all the setters for, uh, for state variables have a, an alternative form in which they don't need to, to know what the old value is. So in, in the setter, if instead of passing a value, you, uh, you pass a function, then React will send you the old value of the state as an argument, and then, then you can do the, uh, the increment. So, so let's say uh, here we say, well, we create an argument, uh, we, we create a function that takes an x argument, and then we return x plus step. And the other one is x uh, minus step. So by doing it this way, we eliminated one argument. So, so we have a component that is a little bit simpler. And, and now we can also remove counter from the parent. So let's make sure that this continues to work and perfect. Uh, so there you go. Uh, this is the way to create uh, subcomponents. Uh, you you will find that on on a real application, your uh, your component tree is going to, I mean, it could get quite big. You you could have uh, many layers of components and subcomponents, and of course, this can go for a, as many levels as you need. So uh, so so you 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 can build your page uh, by having components that are. That, that never get too big because when uh, when a component is starting to get big, you can you can split it into subcomponents, and that's how you can manage the complexity of your project. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is subcomponents, and I uh, will see you in the next video with another core React topic. Bye bye.